About a year ago, I posted this video showing some Harry Potter style footprints made at HitFilm Express. Today, I show you how it's done. Welcome back, you clever person. Justin here with Clever Tagline, and this might be my last tutorial. We'll get more to that a little bit later on after the plane is done going overhead. It's been a long time since I've done anything here on the channel, and a lot's changed since I was last uh, doing tutorials and things on, on a more regular basis. Um, as you can see, I'm stumbling over my words right now, not sure what to say. None of this is scripted. I just don't know how much more time I could put into doing the more elaborate long form tutorials like I used to do. My whole work situation has shifted and I just need to kind of change gears a little bit. But anyway, as promised, as I promised like a year ago or somewhere in that range, I wanted to share the solution I came up with for creating the Marauder's Map style footprints in HitFilm. Uh, the cool thing is you can do this in HitFilm Express, which is really awesome. The first version I had, I was trying to play around with some options in Pro, I think, but I wanted to do it in Express because Express users are always looking for cool things they can do. And I was playing and playing and came up with one version, kind of sort of happy with it, kept playing around a little bit more, came up with a version you saw earlier on the, uh, in the prelude there. All right, we are about three months, roughly speaking, from the time I recorded that whole original intro outside here. And uh, I'm finally finishing up the edit and about to release this and then show you what's going on. But I want to give you some quick heads up first. This is going to be a whole lot more of a general, very rough and dirty walkthrough of what I did to build this whole setup here, more so than it is a fully fleshed out and polished tutorial. I apologize that there's not more to it as far as the polish and preparation and things, but as you can see, there's a three month gap from when I recorded that to when I'm finally getting this thing done. And I just feel it's more important to get this out to you so you can learn from it and figure out what you can do with it to apply this technique or similar techniques in your own projects rather than let it sit even longer until I get the final perfect polished tutorial built and ready to go. Here we go with the walkthrough. Again, very kind of rough and dirty. My apologies for not showing every single effect, uh, detail and property and number and everything like that. But I'm hoping that you can glean enough from the basic principles that are involved in here to be able to apply this in your own projects. So here we go. So it all begins here in the footprint source composite shot. What I've got, I've got these feet that just kind of show up at certain intervals in here. Let's turn off the effects that we have, turn off the fractal noise, turn off the set mat. This is actually where we're starting. And I believe this was just done through a series of masks. So I've got one for the right front, right heel, left front, and left heel. So a pretty simple setup there. You can do this through an image. You can do this through any kind of setup you want to create a solid shape over a transparent background and then one footprint for each side. This will obviously work for any kind of feet you want to do. If you want to do animal feet or human feet or you know a pirate with a peg leg or whatever option you want to go with there, the same basic process works. And then the visibility of those things is controlled on a one frame on and like five or six frames off kind of basis here. I went through a couple different techniques trying to figure out how do I turn these feet individually on and off. Originally, I think I did it through just keyframing the masks. A secondary technique, which I had a, have uh, kind of left in here. Let's go back to frame one. There we go. So there's a mat. It's just a simple rectangular plane, just kind of scaled down to the shape here. That's in place to just expose or be underneath the left of the two feet. And then a couple frames later, the right one appears over on this side. The fun process I did uh, after my initial kind of keyframing the masks on and off over time, and I back way, way out here, I forget how large this is. So I've got a point layer sitting over here, and what's happening is these rectangles here, these planes are parented to that point, and the point is just spinning. And so when this one's over here, the other one's over there, so they're basically rotating in a circle. And the speed of the rotation determines how, how frequently those things appear. And that gives you a nice easy way without having to copy and paste a ton of keyframes over time. So it's like one frame there. So one, two, three, four, five. So every five frames they rotate around. So it's 10 frames in between each, each one's appearance there. Uh, and this adds some linear rotation keyframes on your point layer there uh, to get that done. That's how we control through a simple um, set mat over here, the visibility of the feet. I will actually hide those mat layers there. 
The foot mat grade is the grade that kind of takes both of those things and applies it up there. So I'll turn my feet back on. So now we have, with this thing in place, we have uh, one foot appearing, other foot appearing, and just back and forth like that. On top of that, what I then added was a simple fractal noise, and I've got an animated seed property in here that just dials that up to some crazy value over time. And that just gives the feet uh, a little more variance there as far as how they're appearing with some texture. That plays into the way the feet appear later on. Once you take all the other effects and uh, creates a kind of nice organic disappearance of the whole thing, so it's not simply going from uh, solid shape to transparent, it actually has some variation in there. And there are some other effects that play into that as well. But that's the basics of how this thing is set up over here. But again, they're only on for a single frame, and you'll see why we're doing that once we jump over to the footprint path. So in this composite shot, I'm gonna have to turn off a bunch of effects in here. So we got a full plane in the background there. I think I've got my options set to show checkerboards. So once that's gone, that should be appearing. We got our feet appearing up in here. These are simply some point layers. Visibility for those doesn't make any difference. The footprint composite shot we just had there is dropped in here. And we're using a path sort of kind of technique to animate and have these things appear. But there's a bunch of other effects going on there. I'll turn those effects off. So the first thing that I did was lay out a path that I wanted this whole thing to move along for the path for our footprints. So I've got two point layers to do that. I think what I did was animated one and then copy the keyframes to the other and then just offset it. You can see a little bit of an offset there at the very beginning of the shot by like two or three frames it looks like. So that one point layer, if I go grab this point in here, it's the same path being traversed by both point layers. And I spent some time taking the tangent points in here, dragging the handles out and making a nice smooth uh, transition. But what this is doing then, so with one point slightly in front of the other one, what I'm then doing is taking my path aim and telling that second point to aim at the first one. So yeah, path source, I believe, is the one that was animated first. That was copied to path aim and then path aim was offset and then told to aim at the path source point. So what that gives you over time is with the one point being just ever so slightly ahead of the other one there, it's always aiming in the direction of the path. And so that's kind of controlling how the feet are kind of, you know, traject, uh, traversing rather, uh, this full path out in here. Now, the way this is initially set up, I actually was doing a test a little bit later on to try and figure out a way to solve a particular problem I ran into, and that was with the orientation flipping directions, basically from left to right. Once the orientation of the aiming point there got to a certain thing. So, Effectively, the way that HitFilm's 3D environment is set up, we're looking down the Z-axis into the depth of space effectively. So everything that you put into the scene effectively is kind of standing up as though it's on a wall with the Y-axis pointing up. The problem with that is the way it inter interferes with the aiming setup when you have one layer aiming at another layer. And the way this ends up coming out is that if you rotate an object a certain point in relation to the whole aiming structure, the aim ends up flipping. Somewhere around this range, I originally had the, the, the curved path actually going off in this direction like that. And what they ended up doing was you would see the y-axis flop over to the other side. And I, I ended up changing the path to avoid that because I didn't want that kind of flop to happen. But another way to avoid all that entirely and have the path go anywhere you want to would be to effectively reorient the camera before you start animating any of this stuff and have it be like a top-down view rather than a kind of front view. So the camera is aiming down the y-axis. And in that case, because the aim happens along the z-axis here, as you can see, the z-axis of my path aim is aiming at the path or the point in front of it there. So if you have the camera in a top-down view, then you never have a conflict with the, the y-axis or the aiming axis there kind of conflicting with that uh, up axis and the orientation. So I didn't realize that, that, that possible fix on this thing until I had already finished the whole thing. So if you do the reorientation of the camera, that gets rid of the whole kind of aim flipping issue and you can have a path that goes anywhere you want to, you curlicues back on itself and stuff like that. That's not gonna be a problem.
So I got this stuff set up with our path source and path aim points there. And then what I did, because I had my path aim aiming at the other one, I parented the footprint composite shot to path aim. And the process of doing that had to figure out what the rotation of some of the axes had to be so that my feet kind of you know pointed back towards the camera. And I've also got that scaled down to 10%. Then we have the footprints at a more kind of, you know, manageable size down in there. I'm just going to step through this. You can see uh, there's a footprint there. I can zoom in on that. So there's that one. And then it repeats over here. And so each footprint is a little bit farther along the path as this thing is traversing that path. So the next thing is, okay, how do we actually get the repeating footprints? How do we get the footprints to stay around longer? I initially tried to do that just in this composite shot by itself, and it kind of sort of worked, but I ended up having to use multiple layers of this thing in a final composite shot over here to do the final effect. So the effects that I've got laid on top of this thing are just in this gray layer up in here, and it actually needs the full plane background to be part of this whole thing, but I'm gonna leave it off for right now so you can kind of sort of see what's going on uh, with all this stuff. Okay, so in my effects layer here, I've got a bunch of stuff over here on the side, I'm gonna turn all of these off, and then we'll start talking about them top to bottom there after I turn the effects layer back on. So the first is an echo. The echo effect in hit film effectively says, I want to repeat the image on the screen over a longer stretch of time. As you can see, it's actually rendering that out when I drag this around in here. So we have the feet not just gonna stick it around for one frame, they actually last a little bit more time and kind of repeat themselves um, a bit in the, in the past there. And so I set the echo time to be uh, minus 0.3 seconds. I wanted lots of echo so the feet would stick around for a long time. Uh, string opacity is there, decay at 0.9. So as I kind of step through in time here, We'll kind of go ahead a few more frames. As you can see already right now, just with the echo effect turned on, it's already taking a bit of time here for these feet to re-render. So eventually we should see a new footprint pop in here. If I step forward enough, there's a new footprint there. So the next effect on top of the echo is a simple blur that just softens things out a little bit there. I'll zoom in, you can see uh, that kind of softening effect. So that kind of smooths the whole thing out. And then I did a posterize, so we have a smoother version there. The posterize on top of that kind of reclamps the color values back down to be, you know, more of like a two color option. So right now, that posterization took away pretty much all effects of that texture of the fractal noise. But as that footprint gets more and more transparent, that's when that texture comes back and that creates that kind of nice, again, organic feeling of the same turning into ink uh, as it's laid over the paper. So for this whole thing to work and to actually isolate the footprints back, you know, on top of themselves anyway, uh, we have to have a solid black background behind everything. So I added my full black plane back here once it all renders. And now you can start to see what's really going on with that posterization. Now it affects the entire frame and not just the literal kind of blotches of the footprints or individual squares and things there. So if I back up frames, you can see that footprint there is already disappearing. So the posterize is changing that kind of disappearing uh, transparency version of the foot there into this nice kind of blobby shape that's more organic. And that's all because of that fractal noise pattern that we added in the original composite shot. So we have that happening there. And then again, a demote just takes away all the black from around those things there. So we have this kind of literal fading into a transparent version of itself and it's just the feet. So that's what's happening here in the footprint path. So I took that same concept with the echo and took it over here into this final composite shot. Now watch how long it takes to render a single frame. I'm not gonna do any editing in here. You can see exactly how long this takes. Uh, it's quite a long time with everything apply applied in here, but I will kind of backtrack and show exactly what's happening uh, in the process of this frame coming together. So you can imagine how long it took to do all this uh, as far as exporting just this one like 30 second shot out or whatever this was. But the cool thing is you can zoom in there and you can see again, we have that nice kind of inky behavior there at the feet. Now when they first appear, it's not all that great. As you can see, they kind of appear just kind of transparently there. But the nice thing is it happens so fast that the bulk of the effect, that kind of fading, fading back down to the inky texture you see in there, takes a bit more time to do. And so that stands out more. I never really noticed there's a simple kind of fade in there at the very beginning. Let me get rid of the text layers. 
There we go. Okay. So now let's go back even further. I think the grade I have in here, this is a vignette. So we'll turn that off and dive into these two composite shots down in here and the effects that are on them. And actually, let me go, I'll turn the burn off for right now. Leave the parchment on. And as you can see, I actually slid the whole thing over a little bit to the right on the frame there as far as the placement of these footprints in the screen. We'll start, we'll turn the echo off, turn off motion trail. So we start off, simple fill color, applying a simple kind of black solid color on there to those footprints as they're popping in. So now we add one more set of echo, the same basic settings in there, a negative 0.3, 20 echoes, uh, same everything really. So already we're seeing a nice effect there with the echo applied on this thing. So we have the footprints again dragging out over time, kind of like they did originally. Um, but now they really do last on screen for a much longer time. So the problem with this is that the feet still kind of pop on over an individual frame, which is where the motion trails comes in. And that adds that kind of fade in there at the very beginning. So the effect of the motion trail, what that does is it blends frames together with surrounding frames. So now we have a slightly more transparent starting footprint there. So that's the transparency coming in. That's the motion trail causing that kind of a thing to happen there. Um, but it also has a slight effect on the back end there as far as how things fade out on the other side of things. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. The thing I didn't like about this is that it's just black over something else. It didn't really feel like we have ink on paper. And so I took the same composite shot and then just duplicated it and added a slight effect down in here. So I'm going to turn off the one that's just the straight black composite there and turn on the one that is the burn. So the burn on itself doesn't do a whole lot, but it adds some nice kind of color and pulls the color out of the paper there and adds that to what's going on with the footprints. So when you combine this burn version here, and I believe that's just the same, uh, exact same effect settings, no changes in there, but uh, the blend is actually on overlay. So I think I said burn, I might've tried burn and overlay in a couple different versions there, but effectively the, the effect it's creating is this kind of, you know, enhancement of the underlying color. So once I combine that with the black version of the footprints, the edges of the black picked up some of the edges here of this um, the kind of, you know, soaked up color. Let me zoom in there and show you what that looks like once that finally finishes rendering. It actually feels a lot more like, you know, a burning of the thing into the paper. That's why I think I called it the burn effect, um, because you can see that kind of color picking up around the backside there of the black. And even more so as the footprints fade, they pick up more and more of that color because they're both doing the same fading at the same time. But the, the burn, the paper color comes through a bit more strongly. So as you can see, it's a whole lot more effective to have that combination of the two colors together uh, because it just really makes it feel a whole lot more like that shape and that texture and that color is becoming soaked back into the paper again, almost like in an inky kind of a way. Another cool thing I like about this is that we have this kind of bleeding thing here when the shapes are starting to kind of come together like this. We actually have a bleeding in that some of that burn kind of color, that paper color coming through uh, as the pieces are close together like that. And one of the effects of that fractal noise is that it makes the outline in some cases, you know, not a perfect outline of the original kind of a shoe shape. So we have little notches coming out here in certain cases. And the animated seed on that fractal noise texture is why each footprint really has a slightly unique, slightly organic kind of a feel to it, even though there are these very kind of generic, very structured kinds of shapes in there in that original composite shot. There you go, there is my walkthrough for creating a Marauder's Map style set of footprints in HitFilm. I really hope this has been useful for you. Hope you've been able to get some things out of this you could apply to your own projects. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again sometime down the road in some fashion. Don't know quite how, don't know quite when. But anyway, until we see each other again, clever tagline.